So what should you expect your first week to be like when you're at your first job, you know, fresh out of a boot camp or fresh out of college or you, you know, you're self-taught and you finally landed that first job. What is it going to be like? What's that first week going to be like? What kind of expectations should you set for yourself or what kind of expectations should you set for the new company that you're working for? You know, I'm going to kind of go over what my experience was with my first job and my second job and how it was similar and how they differed and how some things made it a lot easier for me to onboard and some things that I would look for when I do start at a new job in the future to kind of give me some signs of like, is this going to be a good development team? Do they have their stuff together or is this just going to be kind of like a mess? So the first thing that I would say that you should expect at your you know first job during the first week is you're gonna get a laptop um, you know you might have a desktop but most most companies now just give out laptops and you're gonna have to get set up and that's honestly gonna be one of the biggest things that you're gonna have to do that first week you're gonna have to you know install all the programs that you're gonna be running you're gonna have to install all the tools that you use or that your company uses sometimes you might get a laptop that has some of the things pre-installed but you're still gonna have to clone a code base you're gonna have to just get everything set up and get your work environment ready for you to be productive and you know this is a mixture of how much you actually need from the job and how much you actually need from tools that you use and getting getting it just set up for you to be comfortable and the most productive so at my first job when i got there very first thing they did was they handed me a laptop and they sat me down with one of the senior developers and they started going over all the documentation that they did have for me to start setting up my environment and my first job wasn't as well documented as my second job. My first job, there was a lot of tribal knowledge and that was one of the reasons why they did sit me down with a senior developer and he kind of guided me along the way and got me set up. And that's not always the best way. And you know, if, if you're at a company and you, you realize that they're setting you up like this, you know, this might be a sign that they don't have a lot of documentation. I don't remember exactly who said it and I'll try to credit them after I edit this. But there's an old saying that always stuck with me was documentation is a lot like sex. When it's good, it's really good. And when it's bad, it's better than nothing. And that's always stuck with me, especially after my first job where, you know, they, they didn't really document stuff too well. We, we tried our best, but there was a lot of just corporate pressure there. And the upper management did not see the value in documentation. So it sucks to say this, but we had to do what we had to do and documentation would fall to the wayside sometimes because we were just so pressured to, to get to our deadlines. And th that's a story for another video and I'm not gonna get into that kind of work environment and that kind of, you know, that kind of toxic work environment. And it happens a lot in, in corporate jobs that aren't, you know, tech focused, that they kind of just want you to push the product out as fast as possible and they don't really care about the quality of the code. And like I said, that's for another video. But your first thing is gonna be getting set up and you're probably gonna be reading documentation and you're probably gonna be getting a lot of help from the other developers on your team. And that's really what my first job was like. They sat me down with a senior developer and he shared a lot of the tribal knowledge and he helped me get it set up on my laptop. At my second job, everything had much better documentation and getting set up was a lot easier for me. Also, I had two years of professional experience at this point and it was a little bit easier to get set up because I, I kind of just understood how to do it better because I had already been working as a developer for two years. But when you're new, it's going to be a lot harder. At my second job, you know, they had good documentation. They, they said, here, go to this one note and just start reading the getting, you know, getting set up page that we have. And if you have any questions, let me know. And that was a senior developer that they linked me up with at my second job. See, very similar to my first job. Again, they give you some documentation. They, they give you some help with the other developers on the team and you set up your computer. This can take a couple days. You know, it's, it's not uncommon for you to take a long time getting your environment set up. Remember, it's okay to take your time getting your environment set up because if your environment is set up properly, overall your productivity is just gonna be a lot better. If you take your time getting set up and have all your proper tools in your environment, just how you like it. So if you're starting your first developer job and you feel a little pressure that first day and you feel like, oh man, if I don't get set up right now, they're gonna think I suck. It's cool, don't sweat it. My second job, you know, it took me a couple days to get set up 
and have everything up and running how I wanted it to and just have the code you know running on my computer got everything to compiled and my local environment was set so don't feel too bad if you're brand new and you're at your first job and they hand you that laptop and it's taking you a while to get set up and don't be scared to ask questions you know that, that old saying there's no such thing as a stupid question and that's very very true especially when it comes to development because there's so many things that you know no one person is going to know everything so it's okay to ask questions it's okay to to go out and talk to your teammates and say hey you know i'm, I'm trying to run this but but i'm having a problem were, were you able to get it done how did you do it can you help me out and everybody's going to be helpful so don't don't be too scared don't put too much pressure on yourself when you're getting set up the next thing is you're probably going to have to do a lot of meeting greets and a lot of handshaking and the old corporate America onboarding like, hey, how are you? Tell me about yourself. This is me. This is what I do. I've been working here this long and and this is this is the department I run. These are the people that I oversee. And that's pretty much what the rest of your week is probably going to be for the most part. That's what it was at my first job. And that's what it was at my second job. You get your laptop set up and in between you're going to be meeting with a lot of, you know, management and other teams that you are going to work with. You're going to meet up with designers and you're going to meet up with maybe other other developers on other teams that may, you know, cross pollinate with your application. They may, may set up services for you or they may, you know, have the API set up, what, whatever. There's there's always going to be a lot of people that you're going to have to meet that first week. And that's okay, don't feel too nervous if it's if you're just getting started and this is your first job, especially if it's your first like office and, and corporate type of environment. And for me, it was kind of weird. I'd never, I've never worked an office job. I never, I never had an email address. I never, I never had a desk. I, I always worked industry jobs or customer service jobs where, you know, I, I run around parking cars or I run around waiting tables or cleaning tables or whatever it would be. So for me to actually like have a desk and set up that, that's another part of your setup that I forgot to mention earlier. You know, you got to make sure that your workspace is comfortable. Once your laptop is set up, make sure that your desk is set up. So apart from getting set up and meeting with people, you may be lucky enough if you get all that stuff done in the first week, you might actually be given a small task. And this task is not to show how much you know or how good you are. Or they're not trying to like vet you and see if you were telling the truth and don't feel pressured by this. This is just to get you familiarized with what's going on and to kind of just have you poke around and see where everything is and just you know learn to navigate through this application that you've never seen before and there's hundreds of files and there's thousands of lines of code and you know for me i, I just like my my heart dropped and i was like oh i don't know what i'm doing why did they hire me and it, it's all right, you know, if you get this first task, don't be scared to ask a lot of questions because that's what you should be doing on this first task. You should be asking as many questions as you can and don't try to force yourself to find everything on your own because it's gonna make it that much harder. You know, go to your new colleagues, go to those developers that are sitting all around you. They're waiting for you to ask questions. They're expecting you to ask questions. You're brand new. You know, recently we onboarded a senior level developer at my new job and I've, I've had the pleasure to help him around the code base. And this has been really good for me because this is helping me grow as a developer as well. And it's helping me helping me show someone else who is very experienced. This, this guy by no means is a slouch. He knows his stuff. He, he's a senior level backend developer, but I've had to show him a lot of things because he's not familiar with our code base. He's never seen it. This is okay. So don't get overwhelmed. If they give you that small task in your first week, again, you might not even get a task your first week. You might still be getting set up and meeting people and you know, setting up your work environment and setting up your, your workspace. So don't, you know, don't get overwhelmed if you do get that first task and don't feel like you have to finish it. And please, 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 don't take that work home with you. Do not work on it on the weekend. Do not do this. This is a terrible habit. I did it my first job. I felt that I had to prove myself and I would work on the weekends on my free time and I would work after I got off of work and you don't need to do this. Please, please, please don't do this. It's so common for new developers and I think especially self-taught developers. Again, I can't speak for people who went to college. I can't speak for people who went to a boot camp, but speaking personally from my own experience, I felt like I had to prove myself. I felt like I was an imposter. I felt like I had to, 
learn all of this stuff right away, which I talk about in other videos, you know, even when you're learning how to code, there's so much to learn, you can't learn it all at once. So don't get hung up on trying to learn everything at once. And please don't make this mistake if it's your first job and it's your first week, you know, and you're like, I sucked. I barely got my environment set up. Everybody I met knows that I'm a phony. So I gotta make sure that on my weekend, I'm gonna learn all the languages that we use, all the all the tools that we use. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna finish off this code and I'm gonna ask for another task on Monday morning. It's very unrealistic expectations to set for yourself. It also develops bad habits to do this. You don't want to go in and, and start your first job like this because again, this could lead to really bad things. This kind of, you know, mentality when you start a job and if you work like this all the time can lead to burnout easily. You don't want to take any work home with you after your first week because if you do this your first week, you're probably going to do this your second week. If you start with these habits early on, you're going to be setting yourself up for a very bad time. You're going to have a bad time if this is how you start off. So please, your first week, you should just expect yourself to set up your work environment, meet your colleagues and different teams and possibly even managers of different teams or even upper management from different teams. And, and you, you might get a task or two to work on. And really that's what your first week is gonna be. That's, it's, not, it's not a big deal, it's your first week. Think about other jobs that you started and what your first week was like. Not much was expected of you. You know, if <laughs> I've had many jobs where your first week is just kind of figuring out where everything is and figuring out what it is you're supposed to be doing and figuring out you know who, who to work with and who to report to and who runs what. It's the same exact thing in software development. So don't get overwhelmed you know, like I did and just feel like, okay, they know I'm a phony and now I gotta prove myself to the world that I belong here. The senior developers that hired you, the guys and girls that interviewed you, they know what you can do. They know what you're capable of. They didn't make a mistake hiring you. They saw what you brought to the table. They saw the value in you. They saw that you were eager. They saw that you were hungry. They saw that you were working hard to get this job and they gave you the opportunity because they believed that you were a good fit for the position. And you have to remind yourself that because I have to remind myself that sometimes. And I'll do an imposter syndrome video. They've been done. Everybody goes through it. It's completely normal. And don't put too much pressure on yourself for your first week at your new job when you're a self-taught programmer or a junior developer fresh out of college or a boot camp. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos on learning how to code and becoming a self-taught programmer. Thanks, and I'll see you around.